Hello, and a very happy new year to everyone. I have decided that I would like to share with you a vintage episode of the Guns on Pegs podcast. Chris and I are often asked when we're out and about if we have a favourite episode, and in truth, it's really hard to choose between them. Uh, we've recorded some some fantastic episodes over the last few years, but when I stop and really think about it, this episode that we're going to share with you today is definitely, well, let's say definitely top three, and then depending on my mood, it could even be in the top spot. The episode in question was first shared in December 2021, and so another reason for sharing this episode again is that since then, um, there are a lot of new listeners who may not have heard it before. The episode in question is the Shooting Family episode featuring Charlie and Claire Brownlow. The reason I love this episode is because Charlie and Claire both really get on board with the overall vibe of the Guns on Pegs podcast, which is to have a bit of a laugh, have a drink. And you, you'll, you'll see when you hear it that, that they really embrace uh, especially the drink part. It was a, a great episode to record. It was ever such good fun. And it was one of the first episodes we ever did that was longer than an hour. And the reason it's longer than an hour is that it was simply too painful to me to cut out any of the conversation it was all just such good fun so i really hope you enjoy it i know that the first week of january can be a bit of a miserable time after a long uh, christmas break going back to work the weather's miserable uh, so hopefully this extremely fun episode will allow you a little brightness and a little laughter in what can sometimes be a bit of a challenging week i really hope you enjoy it the mic is hot Right. Claire? Yeah? The mic is, is on, i.e. it's recording. Oh, okay. So please... Do not swear you're alive on Guns on Pegs. Right, I'm back in the room, hi. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Guns on Pegs podcast. My name is George Brown, and I am the editor at Guns on Pegs. As usual, I'm joined by Managing Director of Guns on Pegs, Chris Horn. Uh, Chris, you have had an interesting, eventful couple of weeks since the last episode. <laughs> it feels like about six months ago that we actually recorded one of these. <laughs> it, well, uh, it wasn't that long ago, but tell everybody what's been going yeah, on. Yeah, I'm, I'm now a father, a very proud father. It's very exciting. So, uh, yes, awesome news. It's been, uh, it's been amazing, uh, traumatic, eventful, tiring uh, I mean, there's every ad adjective in the book for this, for, for what you go through. We've got, we got a couple of parents with us today, so I'm going to be asking them in a minute about that. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely awesome. So well, yeah, a huge congratulations from me and I'm sure from all of the listeners as well. Uh, but you, you've George. just hinted at it, Chris. A um, bit of a change from the norm uh, this episode because we've got not one but two guests. So tell us about them. We do. We got a proper double act today, uh, and a husband and wife team, no less, uh, and a proper team they are, I must say. So she is—they're laughing already. She she is one of the best known sporting artists in the UK, uh, with a unique style that has led her to collaborate with some of the biggest brands in shooting and beyond. Uh, both George and I own some of her work, uh, and there's a tr strong chance you've seen her work at the game fair, on the front of a magazine, or a, in a shooting lodger in someone's kitchen. Uh, and he organises one of the coolest trips in shooting, amongst other things. Um, so they are both absolutely awesome characters. Uh, and if you haven't been on a night out with them, you're really missing out. Uh, <laughs> a huge welcome to Charlie and Claire Brownlow. Hi. Hi, how are they? Congratulations. <laughs> that was a great intro, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, and congratulations on the baby. Yeah. Very excellent. Awesome. We'll raise a glass for that. Yeah. Another one. Well, uh -huh. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that now. There you go. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> um, Thank you, guys. <laughs> Guy, yeah, guys, go. thanks so much for joining us. Um, you guys are a bit further down the whole parenting road than either Chris or I. So given that Chris has just become a dad and you guys have got uh, two boys of your own, can you tell Chris what he's got in store in the next couple of years? Hmm. <laughs> um, quiet nights, you know, nights in, long sleep, Loads of sport. You yeah. get to go shooting all the time and yeah. fishing. <laughs> And stalking. Conversations Mega. that have nothing to do with nappies or vomit. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, it's you know, it's really rock and roll. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> for me, was that's, that was me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly different, I have to yeah. say. 
Was it was it in the first couple of years that your children got the name the Bograts? I think they got that quite quite soon. Well, it must be when they were both here. So I well, reckon because no, I was Rat Bag. My dad always called me Rat Bag. So he, like, even if we're at wherever, he always used to call me Rat. So and then I don't know. They just well, they're boys. They smell of the loo. So Bograts. Bograts. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just known as that, really. So um, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, look before we get into our drink, seeing as we've already cheers already. Um, mm-hmm. I've got to quickly share a heads up. I'm not going to go into detail, but we've got a really cool offer available today. Uh, and you're, by the end of this pod, you're going to really want it. Uh, and so I'll tell a bit more on that in a bit. But uh, listen out, it's coming up towards the end. So no further more on that. Um, right, let's kick off with drinks. Who wants to go first? Claire, what's that you're drinking? Uh, well, Chris, um, I was introduced uh, to this on a sheet at some friends up near Edinburgh. And it's Fizz and King's Ginger. And it's quite festive, seeing that we're, you know, nearing Christmas. And it goes down really well. Um, Yeah. But mind you, there's a, you know me, I'm, I I, I don't know if the viewers or people might have heard that I like a drink or seven. Um, (laughs) (laughs) The viewers. The viewers. Yo, the listeners. Oh, shut up. Um, I've already had a glass. You can tell where this is going, can't you? Um, but yeah, uh, it's very nice. It's my kind of favourite at the moment. But yeah, the red wine, yeah, the kind of, uh, was it Lady Petrol or Lady Diesel comes out and, you know, the wheels just come off. So I thought I'd be safe and just go fizzy. <laughs> so it sounds like a really good drink. <laughs> it's really good. Has it got a name, the concoction? I don't know, but we could call it one. The Ginger Fizz, the King's Fizz, I don't know. King's Fizz is, yeah, that, they yeah, could go that for that. Sounds good. Uh, King's Ginger definitely had that in their little brochure of things that they Did suggested. They? Uh, is it the old King's Ginger or the new King's Ginger? I don't know. Look, I think it's it. the old one. That's the okay. strong one, so it's fire hey. water, fire water and fizz. Do you know oh, what? William Johnny. Evans always had a bottle on the go in the gun room when Alistair Phillips was there. I don't know why. <laughs> and Just, that's was... why we asked him to be godfather to Alfred. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was pretty, when Al, yeah, I don't know why, he just did. So um, I know exactly, it, it's, a, it's good stuff, but they they, re, they re, sort of rebranded it, brought it out again, half the strength. So oh, you, you could... Yeah, <laughs> but it kind of means that you can have it on a on a, on a, a winter's morning and not feel like you're absolutely getting on it straight away. Yeah, it's always good. <laughs> what shooting or just a general Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesdays really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charlie, what have you got? Uh, so I was introduced to this uh, f- three or four years ago, shooting with a friend in Durham, and it's I'm going to sound really old now. It's actually yeah. a sherry. Uh, yeah, honestly, it's a the boys sh- take the piss out of him so much. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> sherry, Can Jerry. I speak? No, go on, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a sherry. It's been recently bought out by a company called um, Execo. E-X, sorry, X-E-C-O. Uh, it's a Fino sherry, but they do all the different sorts. Um, this guy had it in the freezer, bought it out for 11s. We all had a little, little sharpener of it, and absolutely delicious. It does slightly, the smell does slightly remind me of my grandparents, but <laughs> but it is seriously good. And I probably, I think I get given a kit, my mother-in-law gives me a case every uh, birthday. every birthday, and actually she might need to do it for Christmas as well, because She's, I think uh, I've killed it. You've got a very nice Christmas present, um, thank you very much. You need to wind your neck in. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's seriously good, and yeah. Okay, they've rebranded it. I love it how he keeps saying they've rebranded it, it's just so he doesn't sound like old and funny, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Sorry, called... it's a really cool brand, guys. Buy it. Yeah, no, it is actually genuinely very good. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. No judgment here. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking of grandparents, uh, so so my drink's always got a serious side to it, but very much a grandparent link. So, uh, so yesterday was uh, my wife Flo's uh, dear grandpa's funeral, which was rather sad. Oh, God, but I'm so sorry. Amazing, amazing guy. Uh, and someone that uh, I, I should absolutely try and follow. Such a lighthearted guy. Uh, always found the joke in everything. And um, I was driving. I didn't have a drink, but all the guys were standing there yesterday. We went back to the to the barn after the funeral, and they had with them a nice cold Doom Bar, which was his favourite beer. So I stole one from the fridge, stashed it in the baby bag, and here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing that you need to get really good at is stashing beers in baby bags. Yeah. W- was he a shooting man, Chris? Yeah, so... so- so uh, Mike wasn't a shooting man, but uh, he had an absolute obsession with pheasants. Uh, he 
he was so he was 93 when he when he passed away uh, a few weeks ago literally only a few days before our little annabelle was born oh, which is no. rather sad but um so he the pheasants used to come up to the uh, to the patio doors uh, french doors and uh, they'd literally tap on the doors asking him to go out and feed them and he'd go and feed them from his hand so it was Amazing. literally on, on demand feeding and in the order of service yesterday right in the front cover was a picture of one of these pheasants which was lovely oh, uh, <laughs> so that's to him and Doombar what a beer I love it I'm really glad that was his favourite because <laughs> it's awesome um, so yeah to Mike but yeah, to Mike, to Mike. Yeah. oh it's such a shame you missed the baby that's always yeah it's always it. the way isn't it yeah my granny was the same George, what are you drinking? Uh, well, so um, podcast listeners will remember that for the party at the game fair, we had drinks supplied by the Borders Distillery, who are in Howick, which I think is not far Sweet away hearts, from... Hoik, sweetheart, from, Hoik. From, Hoik. Sorry, I do a point. I do it's a all right, Hen, right. just like, get a right, a right. Okay. Because <laughs> well, they will come and beat you up. It is, um, it's lovely. Sorry, lovely. So, sorry. um... <laughs> so, um... They very kindly sent me their home bar kit uh, the other day uh, to have some fun experimenting with cocktail making. And it includes a bottle of their gin, a bottle of their vodka, and a bottle of their blended scotch whiskey. Normally, I'd just be drinking neat scotch on these podcasts. But in honor of your location and the fact oh. that they sent me all this nice booze to uh, play around with, That's so um, cool. I have made one of the cocktails from their little book of cocktail recipes that came with this kit. So I have got a an old fashioned, which is a bit of a twist. Instead of sugar, it's got maple syrup, uh, yeah. and it's got some bitters in it, uh, and it's supposed to have a twist of orange. But I couldn't find an orange, so it's not got that. Oh my but god! It's very can, I nice. just, can I just really embarrass Charlie one for one second? Okay, Please do. Put this in, of course, you so can. Funny. <laughs> okay, so when you when you said oranges, okay, so you know this time of year it's all about the satsuma oh. and the clementines, okay, or clementines. Charlie came in to a friend of mine. Uh, we were in this uh, stug the other day, and we were, okay, really hungover. Uh, we hit it quite hard playing cards and drinking quite a lot the night before. And um, we said, "Can you bring us in some satsumas, please?" He comes in and he kind of looks really pensive and goes, "What did you say?" Well, if you can't remember, oh the story. no! It's so, I'm so mad at Jake. He goes, "Don't you find that satsumas are like winter's little rays of sunshine joy?" <laughs> he literally just, I didn't say the joy bit. I just said little. So funny. God. Oh god, I'm really sorry, but that was just one of the most belting things. And also, the Borders Distillery is on the other side of the river in Hoyk, which is what nine miles down the road from us, and it's opposite side of the river to where my gallery is. Oh really? Ah. Yeah. So yeah, and it's an Love awesome it. building. The um where. The distillery is. Uh, Oike. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Lovely link. Love a link like that. So, you know, taste or pray. <laughs> taste <laughs> or pray. <laughs> right. Okay. So, uh, the, the next segment of the podcast is a, a fan favorite. Uh, it's where we ask our listeners to send in uh, their shooting quandaries and queries and dilemmas and all that kind of stuff. And between us, we try to resolve them. Uh, it's called Whose Bird Is It Anyway? And this episode's submission comes from a chap who's after some marital advice. So I thought it would be suitable for this <laughs> episode. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Don't do it. <laughs> oh uh, let's call him Percy. Uh, Percy writes, I have a huge conundrum here. I'm looking to book a last minute shoot over the festive season and I've narrowed it down to a select three. This is where my dilemma begins. My other half used to work in the gun trade for a gunsmith near London. She knows all the best shoots and best days to be on and won't let me pick the shoot I wish to go for. I want to be able to pick my own day and do my own research and learn from my mistakes. I'm grateful that she's trying to look out for my best interests by using her knowledge, but it's rather frustrating and it's become something of a bugbear. I need your advice. Shall I take her experience and advice or take the plunge and book the day I wish to go on? Doing so may mean I'll be in the doghouse for a few months. Doghouse every no, time. See. Make your own. Do, do it. Do your own research. She might be right. You never know. We're but. always right. Just FYI. <laughs> well, no, yeah, but seriously. it's always half the fun of, book, of 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 shooting is doing the research and finding out all the information you can about uh -huh. various sheets. Is she going with you though? Oh, I mean, it doesn't is, is, say. It's the reason why she's kind of been quite forthright in her opinion is because I'm, she's actually not coming. Because I would just be, if I was her, I'd be like, oh no, go for it, whatever you want, knowing full well that he's going to choose the kind of lesser of them and be like, oh, have fun, sweetheart. And he has a shit day. He comes back, sorry, swear. He comes back and she just can be all high and mighty being like, oh, okay, I told you so. See, that 
it might God. just was. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce this is the sort of crap I got to put up no, with. No, but seriously, if she's going on the day, then I think I, she, she hasn't have... asked the question, so oh, yeah. it's slightly. It, it sounds like she might. I don't know who would have that strong opinion if they weren't going. Exactly. Yeah. I just just get on with it and just go and do something else. Go and do your own day on on the other day. Well, that's, that's, what, that's what he's saying. It. That's the question. Yeah. I mean, so it, it sounds to me like our correspondent Percy is a little bit less experienced in the shooting world than his other half. So my inclination would be to to pay attention to the person who yeah. knows what they're talking about, like I do with Charlie all the time, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Yeah, George, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you, but I think half the fun, and I think this is where sometimes, uh, you know, Guns on Pegs, for example, is a prime example of some way where you can go and do your own research, and you can actually find out quite a lot about shooting in different parts of the world just th- through reading uh, and then phoning, speaking direct to the estate. Um, I think that's quite important for someone's. But also you have to listen to what people who have more experience or perhaps have shot places, so uh, peer-reviewed, whether that's your wife or, or other, that's also quite important too. What's, so what's perhaps, the main thing about this story, sweetheart? Well, what I'm just going to say yeah. is that <laughs> to listen to his wife... Thank you. But then to go and do his own research <laughs> and see if they tally. They probably will tally, but if they don't, that's why they got married. then doghouse. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm, I'm sort of with Charlie here you know looking through the photos and choosing that place is part of the fun of it because when you get there you're kind of looking for the sort of reinforcement of, of the excitement that you had when you made that booking if someone just tells you I'll just go here I, I know that's sort of nice and it takes a bit of the risk out of it but it's not quite as fun is it yeah it's like life you want to make your own mistakes really and learn from them don't you yeah, absolutely. <coughs> so I think the, the compromise then, which is always a good idea in marriage, I've found. What's that? Um, the compromise <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, is to j- just get her to choose from your short list of three. No, but I think that's a problem, isn't it? He had a short list of three. He's got a short list of three, you're right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just think you should ignore her. Yeah, <gasps> I'm with you on this one, Chris. <laughs> Chris, wow. Okay. Well, okay. okay, so hold on. She, she, she used to work in the gun trade for a gunsmith Yeah, we can totally London. figure who was that uh, as well. Yeah, I was about to say, if we don't know this person, there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a high chance I've we do. I've got an so idea we... if it might be as well. <laughs> well, don't say anyway. <laughs> we, we've got to tread very carefully. But yeah. anyway, whoever it is, and I'm sure she's lovely, I think she should be ignored. If you are the other half, send us an email and give us your side of the story yes, as well. Yes, no, exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I think you need to follow up on this one. <laughs> it's going to be awful, though, if he does then find a day books it and has a shocker and yeah but and then that's his own fault isn't it <laughs> yeah well, no, it we've advised him to do that <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> i haven't well yeah i kind of have um yeah Next question. he needs to send in the short list and then we can tell oh, yeah no. you can ask us for no it. He, he'll be fine making mistakes is all part of the part of the Life. process yeah. uh, just just book a day at all three yeah Exactly. Oh, no. Thursday, Friday, no, Saturday. No, 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 no. no, no. Bosh, no so, so Char- Charlie, to, to to keep Claire really happy, you do Friday, uh, you do Friday, Mon- uh, Friday, Saturday, Monday, and, and Monday, then you get, yeah, and then you get another day, day away. Yeah, exactly, another yeah. day away. Perfect. As well. so, <laughs> he has never. I've never said no to a day shooting or a day's fishing to Charlie Brownlee, and that's why we've been married for fourteen years. <laughs> you never said no. To fishing or shooting, I've said no to a lot Charlie, of other things. Is this tr- is that true? No, it is actually true. Okay, I I, well, <laughs> I tell her it's work. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> all my all my all my sport is work. I yeah, think... but I can write off against business. It's fine. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> man. Let's do that. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to need to get your your uh, your advice, Charlie, because I I've not managed to make the it's work, darling, excuse fly. How have you not managed to make it? You work for Guns on Pegs. How have you not managed to make yeah. it it's work? Yeah, seriously. Apparently, it's having fun. Therefore, it doesn't. Surely, count. shooting is the one thing that you absolutely can get away with doing because it's work. On one or two occasions, I've got away with it. <laughs> I've, I've even found a ski resort that has. Uh, I saw people trout fishing, so I have whacked that against the business as well. Because <laughs> frankly, Honestly, he was so excited. That he told Harry, and Harry was literally Harry's our eldest, and he was taking. Yeah, but the point is, I can. I, I, I saw fishing. I know I can do it there now. So research tech, yeah, trout rod so, skis, awesome. Well, yeah, the so business. true. Brilliant. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll cut that bit out for anyone listening on an HMRC IP address. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll be, about, be that bothered. It's not an <laughs> no. <to> <laughs> They got they got bigger fish to fry. Would have uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, unpopular opinions is the next section, isn't it, George? It is. Have you got one for us, Chris? I do indeed. Um, okay, so this unpopular opinion comes from the US of A from someone I shall name Bryson. Uh, he writes. Um, I have developed a quite unpopular opinion. Recently, a debate has grown in my group of gents that we can't reach an agreement on. This debate has been on the etiquette of shooting and shooting attire. While we have reached common ground on shooting etiquette, we still can't seem to find common ground about proper attire. It's my opinion that we should follow proper dress code. I'm a fan of formal shoot attire as I feel it feeds to the overall experience of, of the country pursuit. This is definitely something that is lacked in the States. This is at least true of the area I'm in. The argument has been made that our attire of camouflage and blaze orange is our American tradition. While this could be valid, I feel that it's far from true as we owe our roots to the old world, the very place this dress code has originated. Now, I'm not implying that this is the only way that it should be done, but I do feel that it gives to the overall experience of a true shoot. Then again, maybe I'm being too petty on the matter. So, unpopular opinion from over in the States. Should, should he be wearing his blaze orange or should he be going back to the traditional tweeds? Slightly depends on what his yeah, uh, exactly. his, fr- his friends how safe his friends are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yes, we do need a form of shooting in here. Can we assume that they're doing some fairly traditional form of shooting? I would I'm imagine. Guessing. Is this in America, though? Yeah, yeah. Is this in America? he walked up quail or something along those lines. Well, then right? You do need to be seen, though, don't you? Yeah, but that's the thing. It, this this is we, we're missing a bit of vital information here because if it is walked up quail, there's a strong argument for a fair bit of orange knocking around. But, yeah, then but then again, you can always wear wear like something fantastic underneath. Something fantastic. Something fantastic. Fabulous, oh, like, darling. I'm doing, being like, all like <laughs> got one or whatever. No, but you know what I mean? Like a bit of a shuffle shirt. Oh, uh, very good. Um, thanks. Another plug. There we go. Um, <laughs> you know, you could go from three different varieties, maybe. Um, I, I, can't, I have to say, I kind of, even in the UK, because obviously I have quite a lot of American clients that come over, I'm actually not that most Americans that come over want to wear the formal kit. They want to wear the right stuff. But as their agent stroke their host, as long as they're comfortable and safe, that's that's the key for me. So I don't actually really mind what they wear uh, to a day shooting. I've had people in jeans um, out shooting on some. Oh, dear. You know, uh, well, yeah, but it, you know, it's, what they, it's what they came in, you know, and it's, you know, that's what they were comfortable in. They had, they were on the game train, so you know, and I, you know, why why would I tell them otherwise? And actually, it didn't deter their, it didn't stop their enjoyment of the day. But in the same breath, I think most people want to follow the form rather than. Yeah. So, so essentially, what this, this debate that they're having here is kind of like the tie or no tie debate that we have. It's just that yeah. they're they're sort of all, like down the super functional blaze orange, all the rest of it, everything very modern, Gore Tex. <laughs> versus like a bit more tradition and he's saying we should bring some of the traditions that we yeah. kind of uphold quite well uh, and keep them in their form of shooting rather than just go super modern and i kind uh, of agree I, with him i think yeah i think that to wear what you're closed for shooting or whatever you're doing if you're going riding you wear jumpers you know all these different things and black tie you wear you know smoking jacket and whatever I think that if you're going shooting, I think it kind of it's more fun to kind of dress up and wear the right things and kind of you look a bit more like you know what you're talking about. I mean, imagine if you know you go on a shoot and there's you you know I don't know a woman wearing leggings and an anorak and you know a kind of I don't know. I just think it would fill yourself like fill yourself with like a bit of oh Christ! I hope I don't get picked next to her. Yeah, don't click on the search tab on Instagram too often because there's quite a lot of that going on now, <laughs> isn't there? Oh, is there? <laughs> oh God. Have you not seen it? I just, no. I, oh, I, 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 Mind safe, you, I have safe to comment say, for another time. I have to say, with with regards to kind of clothing and shooting, um, I personally, and this is, I'm going to, you know, say this is very much a personal Uh-oh. opinion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't like the whole matchy matchy, this is what my friend's wearing, so I've got to wear the uniform. I like to wear, for example, um, 
you know, a nice, I've got these beautiful, really, really old, I think I've had them for, God, almost 20 years, but a really old pair of really wild leather um, plus fours and a barber that literally, if you could put it on the ground, it would walk away and it smells so bad. You know, that lovely old musty barber smell that, that just brings me back to my childhood. Smell, a good smell. Oh my God, <laughs> shut up, Brando. <laughs> yeah. Um I love that. And I love wearing, you know, my dad's, I've stolen countless amounts uh, of his kind of scarves that he's brought back from the Middle East, much to his um, disappointment and irritation. Um, and I kind of like doing the whole colour thing, you know, the greens and the browns and stuff, but kind of, oh my God, stop, Charlie's falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I was just halfway through that. I slightly zoned out because I suddenly realised I can mute Claire. <laughs> oh my god no you can't because you'd be this, using both of us thank you no, I, I like this this is a vital bit of uh, feedback because 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 there's a lot of them um, you've got to remember like so there's a lot of people listening to this podcast they haven't been shooting for a long time they sort of got into it the last few years right mm-hmm. and there's a danger that if you go on something like instagram or facebook or whatever you will just end up wearing the exact same exactly. thing as everyone else don't and you don't need to i agree i think there's a chance and we've had this debate about matching tweeds and all the rest of it but mm-hmm. i think it, i think it's important for everyone else to sort of feel comfortable in whatever they want to wear but don't feel that you have to wear the obvious and there's no point yeah. labeling what those obvious brands are I mean, but. yeah exactly i we've got a day shooting up in perthshire in a couple of weeks and it's actually the boys are shooting or harry shooting and he's grown out of his wellies because they are his feet are growing like bloody so fast so he's gonna be wearing mine because i'm really cheap and i'm not buying them anymore because he's growing so much but i'm wearing a pair of i was wearing them today they're these cow skin fur lined boots charlie's literally wrinkling his nose right now but they're the warmest <laughs> thing in the world they're totally waterproof because they've got leather on the bottom. And I'm going to be toasty as hell. <laughs> Harry's going to be all, you know, wearing the wellies and everything. And I just think that you don't have to... I wore a skirt, a tweed skirt shooting. Do you remember when we went up to Brit ages ago when all the team from London... Yeah, actually, you did look pretty hot. Thanks, babe. Love yeah. you, babe. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. I think one of the things about about shooting is that actually you can go very, very conservative, or you can use yeah. it as an opportunity to do a bit of peacocking and and you know express your personality yeah. through your choice of outfit. But it, this also got me thinking. Obviously, in a lot of places in the states, the blaze orange is mm. is a legal requirement. So then I thought to myself, well, but what would what would it be like? How would you feel? I'm going to ask you this, Chris. How would you feel if next year there was a piece of legislation passed that everybody out shooting, anybody carrying a gun or beating, had to wear blaze orange? Oh dear! What a disaster that would be. <laughs> no, it's awful. Dead. I've I've got I've got a Harkeela Pro Hunter jacket. It's a really lovely uh, coat, and it's got if you unzip a little bit on the arm it's got these horrendous Cheeky. little orange tags that come out so that i can sort of blend myself in in europe uh and sometimes i pull them out on a shoot day just just to show them that i've got them in my arm i'm prepared for my european travels uh but uh <laughs> everyone just laughs at you straight away what are you doing what's that all that and i i think this is the thing it just looks ridiculous compared to everything else we're wearing i don't know what do you I, think george I, I just think that the the, the tweed <clears throat> mills would have to get super creative and you'd have to have blaze orange tweeds be fab. so, so we'd actually good? have to get edward king to release his sort of version of his tweet like and, exactly and everyone, we'd all everyone like their own amazing <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure shuffle would come up with something yes. outrageous yes oh my god amazing sort of nice a nice orange gilet to wear on the uh on the day shooting yeah so like a a, a big check tweed but every other patch yes is just pure yes. orange pure now orange we're talking. amazing epic <laughs> that's something that they could maybe do for um april fools next year or even a yeah uh, <clears throat> didn't they actually do that as an april fool it was no, very they did good the, the leopard print and the zebra print and i was like oh my god i need like i think everyone i think that's like, slightly backfired in the fact that everyone was like yeah i'll definitely have one of those when they come out yeah. like, oh god was like, it's awesome that was like our dating thing we get more emails got more oh emails my god, that saying was amazing. you should do, uh you should definitely launch guns on gu- what was it, it was guns so on beds good. Guns on beds. Guns on beds. It was, oh my God, that was the best. That was so funny. What, what was it? You know our strap lines, plan the best days of your life. George, what was the strap line? I think it was plan the best lays of your life. Oh it was very God. good. George, did you come up for the graphics for it as well? Because it was brilliant. I did make that graphic, yes. Yeah, it was very good. Oh my God. <laughs> so have we got a conclusion? Wear what you want, be creative and don't, don't try hard. I really... Well, no, it's the American guy. Yes, I know, but I, let me finish. You always okay. do this. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <sighs> okay.
Okay, so wear what you want. Don't try too hard, and then put your, you know, neon over top because you can take it take it off for lunch in Eleven's and have your photos without the neon. I think, but then you know, it's always quite safe to be seen because I was shot once on a shoot. Um, so I, I'm all for safety. <laughs> what? Yeah. Crikey. It's only in the leg. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you left that one till late in the blaze orange conversation <laughs> what you were there or was it no, you? No, no. you weren't there no i know i wasn't there charlie uh how, what do you what do you feel with this um, with this i opinion? think uh given that it's in america uh, yeah i mean i'd wear a you know plus fours tie and then my uh, fluorescent jacket over the top yeah. perfect jobs are good that's exactly what i did when i went uh ball oh, shooting fun. in france i was i was I was with all the Europeans who are in some very modern kit and I made a distinct point of wearing all my tweed and then an orange hat okay. and an orange jean. Very good. <laughs> Love it. And a tie. <laughs> Even ha- it was it was absolutely roasting and I had my woolen uh. socks on and I was really regretting it. Walking the boots the or wellies. Ooh. Uh, I literally, I think I might have even wielded the loafers oh. out to oh the Oh my uh, God. To <laughs> Oh, like when you were in the pigeon hide in your Fairfax and Favour slip on. They, well. they go, they go everywhere with me. I was on a partridge shoot the other day, and everyone was in their wellies, and I just wore my loafers to the peg. And by the end of the day, they were all jealous because it was actually quite warm. But yeah, they, 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 those suede loafers stand up to quite a lot. You can clean them up and yeah, dust exactly. them off. Right. So Percy and Bryson and Charlie and Claire are now members of the most noble order of the Garters, and will very soon, when Chris gets his act together, be in receipt of their very own set of the extremely exclusive Guns on Pegs podcast so shooting sock garters. If you too have got a shooting confession, a quandary, a query, or an unpopular opinion that you would like us and our guests to help you with, and you want a set of garters, drop us an email to pod at gunsonpegs.com. Now, on the subject of uh, the Order of the Garters, um, we do need to update everybody, Chris, on the uh, Order of the Garters shoot day at the end of January. Yeah, so as expected, that went really, really rather quickly. Uh, we recorded a couple back to back. So the second one came out. Uh, we were recording it as as uh, as we just sort of made the last one available. So by the time we'd finished recording that second one, the whole thing was full. So I'm, I'm sorry for those that have emailed in. We've got a reserve list in operation. Uh, but do continue to share your stories and unpopular opinions and register your interest for the shoot day. Uh, I'm, you know, we probably won't get another in this season, but given the demand, I'd love to do a few more of these. They'll be a good laugh, I'm sure. So yeah, keep sending your stuff in and obviously you'll get some garters as well. Yeah. So Chris, just on, on that one last thing, are we going to try and record something podcasty around that day? Are you going mm-hmm. to try and record something podcasty around that day? <laughs> I think it'd be quite fun, but I don't quite know what format it should take. So maybe people can write in with some suggestions about the kind of podcast they might like around that day. I think that'd be good. And then if there's a good idea, we'll go with it. Yeah, bring your microphone to the pub and then uh, and see what happens. You're going to just be editing quite heavily for a few days. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Brownlow questions. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, I always think it's quite nice to get a feel for our guest shooting background and and you know, the history within shooting and field sports in general. But I'm also interested to know if you know each other's stories. So Claire, you can go first. Oh, no. Do you know what Charlie's first game bird was? Oh crap! Um, a something flying. <laughs> 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 no, I think it. Oh, this is awful. For for for, for our listeners, Charlie is yeah, he really is. It's right kind of like really putting it. off. Um, I want to say, I think um, it was a, a duck. <laughs> oh my god! Yes! Yeah, okay, okay. A oh. duck. So oh. you got the right okay. type. What what type of duck? A wet one. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> uh, like yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it was a. Which is mm, with no? Uh, oh, help me out! <laughs> it was a teal. Teal, damn it! Oh, teal. very nice. That's a hell of a first. Uh, flighted in on a, a drop, Marshall, dropping like in that. on a pond. Yeah, wonderful. Where was that? Uh, uh, at my father's house in oh, in, Nor- okay. in Norfolk. Sorry, on the Norfolk coast. Lovely. Oh, good place for it. Yeah, no, it's very. Uh, it's great. The. Um, I mean the flight, the flight, dad's flight pond. It was called the gin and tonic flight pond because you could literally walk out <laughs> of the house. It was sort of a hundred yards away from the house. It was, you know, it had been cut into the marsh perfectly for both um, dabbling and bottom feeding birds. And 
the we used to get widgeon, teal, everything used to come in off obviously from the the coast, which was two miles away. Uh, and interesting, I was talking to Dad the other day, and I was saying, saying to him, "Well, you know, should the flight pond at home could we get it back up and running?" And he's like, "Weirdly, the duck just I mean the, the whole Glaven Valley used to have quite a few flight ponds on it, and it doesn't anymore. It weirdly, which I'd have thought which really quite surprised me, and the duck are now going sort of other places, which is really quite interesting. I think they're going to my mate's place, which would be mm. uh, west of yours, because <laughs> he still gets loads. <laughs> What is it maybe to do with the farming? We used to have a mallard come over and feed on the, the winter stubbles. And because the winter stubbles aren't really there anymore, they stop coming. Uh, you know, when farming practices changed and the, the you know the rotations and all that sort of stuff changed, the, the ducks stopped coming in. I wonder if that's why the, the ducks aren't Poss- are Possibly, but I think also there's probably, I think there's probably quite a lot of uh, stuff been happening on the coast uh, with regards to uh, the wetlands there. Um, I mean, the geese still come come over, the pinks that still come out, which amazing. is amazing. Um, but obviously, they do quite a lot of crop damage. Um, yeah, I don't know what the answer is, actually. But uh, Dad, Dad just thinks it's people aren't, you know, feeding the flight ponds and they, they're going elsewhere, which is quite a weird thing, considering how popular duck flighting into a flight pond is it's at the moment. Uh, I was literally walking the dog 10 mm. minutes before we uh, we came on air, and I put up a whole load of mallard uh, off the field. So it's clay land around us, and it floods quite quickly. Just you just get these little sort of puddles, quite large puddles in the field, and I put up a whole load of mallard off the field next to us. It was quite exciting, but uh, yeah, not not a huge number around us either, though. But we're in, I mean we're in the middle of Kent, but you know. And Charlie, what about Claire's first game uh, pheasant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on. In Thetford, in Thetford with your old man. That was in Thetford with my daddy. Uh, yeah, no, um, dad. What? Who yeah, well, that, that's, that, no, I did. Yeah, that's one I got it. Oh, that he got it. Yeah, yeah. all right. No, because I said a duck. No, okay. but you didn't say what it, type it, of duck. Okay, so what kind of pheasant was mine then? <laughs> it was a. a yeah, cock there we go. No, it wasn't. It was a hen. Oh well. I'm lying. I'm lying. I don't know. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, no, <laughs> stop it. It's not a competition. If it was, I'd win. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, George. <laughs> Sorry, I think George just needs another drink. <laughs> he's thinking, he's just—he's drinking that, thinking, "Oh God, the amount of editing that's going to have to go yeah, on no, in this, exactly. in this Poor podcast." Guy. Poor guy. <laughs> Christmas bonus time. He's going to put it out uncut. Yeah. No, please don't. <laughs> when was this cock or hen pheasant in Thetford? God, or just outside Thetford? I hope. God, when I was eleven, I think. Uh, yeah, eleven. I think my dad gave me a. Yeah, we we went out and he gave me. Hang on, oh, I touched the thingy. Sorry, don't say I touched the thingy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not in a dirty way. Um, <laughs> okay, Come on, just crack on. No, um, oh god. <laughs> right. Please edit. Um, yeah, no. Dad used to take me out. Um, I don't know if we can actually say that it was on the. No, seriously, well, this is no, like no, 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 we'll just don't say it. Just say it's in Thetford. Okay, so my father oh. took me out in Norfolk and, yeah, just kind of rough shooting one on one. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Those are the best days, anyway. Um, just rocking around a wood. And it sounds like it was poached. Never. Don't be so silly. My dad's in the army. He's very respectful. <laughs> Nothing is ever poached. Borrowed. To anyone's knowledge. Yeah, it's borrowed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so neither of you are, are from the borders, are you? Um, so you both, it sounds like. You're both from Norfolk. You can clarify no. that in a second. Uh, how, how did it come about that you ended up in the borders? Um, I was at Edinburgh Uni and then stayed up there. And were I went for a week's holiday up on the Naver with a boyfriend who happens to be Charlie's mate and now godfather to our eldest. So it's, you know, slightly incestuous, but never mind. Um, I mean, that's how we roll in Norfolk. Um, and Charlie came back up and I hadn't seen him for years. And, you know, we got on really well. And, oh, my God, there's a funny story. Can I tell no, a story about you? No, absolutely Please. not. Oh, my God, it's so funny. <laughs> no. Yeah, so no. one night, why? It's hilarious. Absolutely Everyone not. will love it. No. No, okay, right. So this one night, Charlie... Stop kicking me under the table. <laughs> Am I allowed to tell it? No. Seriously? Yes. What will you do? What will I do? Yeah, nothing. I'll tell stories about you. Well, there aren't any that nobody... Like, seriously. Okay, so no, Charlie... seriously, no. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> where was I oh yeah we were on the neighbor and Charlie came back up and he was working in Norfolk and I said oh come back up to Edinburgh there's a great group of us and we had the best time I mean looking back on it now I mean 
God, it was fun. Um, and, you know, nothing happened. I didn't cheat. Nothing happened like that. Um, and I kind of kept in touch with Charlie. Charlie came back up to Edinburgh and we just became friends again because we've known each other since I was, what, 10. And his sister was my dorm captain at prep school. Um, and I've always had a bit of a crush on the old Charlie B. Who didn't? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Can I tell the other story about who you say always fancied you? No, absolutely not. Really? No, no she's really so, famous. This is so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, but it's really No, good. don't. No, okay. <sighs> oh, God. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like messing me now. Who was it? But anyway, um, yeah, so Charlie came back up. And then we had Harry. I was at art school. Charlie had a flat. He was made redundant. I was at art school. I mean, life was bloody brilliant. And... Um, we kind of decided that Charlie wanted to do sporting agency and he said now's the you know the time to do it if not now then when and um, we kind of literally put a compass around Edinburgh because he wanted to still be able to come in with a small baby I'm winking at you Chris going oh my god we can totally socialize it will be A's <laughs> anyway um, we moved to a little cottage in the borders um, an hour south of Edinburgh and I tell you what the chaps in the borders we thought we had a social life in Edinburgh. Holy hell. Like the parties in the borders, honestly, the moment we arrived, it was like fresh blood and everyone was like, come to our party, come to our party. It was amazing. And I think because you're in the countryside, everyone just wants to just go full hog and all the time. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And then you kind of throw a baby at someone and someone else looks after it and you kind of pick up the wrong one and take it home and it's all fine. So, um, yeah, it's good times. That's a hell of a sales pitch for the borders. Is Charlie's next business estate agency? <laughs> I wish. Funny you should say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're homeless as of June. So if anyone knows of anywhere in the borders, please let us know. Right. Uh, so so you're in the borders. Yeah. Now we need to talk paintings because that's where that's where the painting's based, isn't it? Yes. So, for, Claire, for anyone that hasn't come across your work, can you can you explain the technique the effect, and, and then also, obviously, how it came about. Um, well, I think I'm going to hand over to my beautiful assistant um, to the roast me because uh, the way in which uh, Mr. Brownlee describes my art, um, I have stolen, and he says that I'm a really crap salesperson. Um, so I will hand over to Charlie to talk about the technique. There you go. Technique. Yeah, okay. Go. So. And no, he doesn't paint them, by the way. <laughs> I do paint them. Um, <laughs> see Brownlee. It works either way. Um, the um, So basically, you've got a tail feather. Uh, the nib of the tail feather has to be quite hard. Claire then cuts it like an old-fashioned quill pen, if you can imagine. So the hard end of the tail feather cuts, so it creates a, a fairly soft nib, actually. Um, Claire then paints onto um, watercolour paper using inks and watercolour. Uh, because the watercolour paper is raised, it, it's sort of not even, as she's painting the picture... So come the flax. Oh no! Stop uh, it! So the, what was your what's your? I'm waiting for the line. The <laughs> so it, I was getting to <laughs> sorry, that. Sorry. So basically, as she's painting the picture, it creates directional splatter. As it, as it glides across. No, skips across. The page. Uh, skips across the page. He's very and it, ca it, it catches the the, the, the raised watercolor <laughs> paper yeah. and just flicks. Which actually, I think you'll agree. On one occasion, you did a North Norfolk. Uh, Harrier's Huntsman, yeah. which is green top and a red lapel oh, yeah. uh, for my mum. And the flick on the red lapel looks slightly... Like he's been shot. Yeah. So And I, get, <laughs> I do get that a lot. And it's just that everyone goes, oh, it looks like it's been shot. And I go, oh, yeah. Um, ugh, it's lit. Oh, God, I hate that comment. And yes, sometimes it does. And sometimes I have to trash it and start again. Um, but the, the way in which the splatters work... And the way in which I paint, it's directional. So I don't just colour in a wing. I kind of paint the wing in the in the direction of the feather. Or if you're painting a dog, the fur goes. So therefore, the movement in which it gets kind of gives it that yeah. energy and stuff. And I did have... Well, I'm Sorry, go on. I was going to say, I'm glad you went with uh, pheasant feather art by Claire Brownlow rather than directional splatter art by Claire Brownlow. Yeah, no, it wouldn't work, would it? <laughs> it would be directional splatter art by uh, Charles Brownlow. <laughs> yeah, yes. I've got a competition coming. Um, no, I did have a very awkward moment um, at the game for, I think I, it was probably one of my first. I'd been invited by the British Deer Society 
And it was just a, probably one of the funnest game fairs I've been to. And I think I just had Alf and um, they kind of gave me the section and it was literally like wooden fencing. So kind of like slats of wood. And I put all my paintings up and I sold so much and it was so brilliant. And I had so many wonderful comments and so many brilliant, brilliant customers. And I was painting a commission of a Whippet and this client had wanted it kind of side on and it was a male Whippet. And obviously I got down to the area in inverted commas and because uh, it's ears god i know what's coming it's it's flipping ears <laughs> uh, yeah you know what's coming you know charlie's very simple um so <laughs> i got to the area and this group of shall i say slightly refreshed essex gentlemen came up who actually still keep in touch and have bought loads of my work and i think it happened to be because of this situation and they were talking to me and being absolutely kind of away with the fairies and Bance was rolling and it was great. And I, oh God, I was going to say straight its penis. <laughs> I was painting the dog's area and the directional splatter produced... <laughs> <laughs> produced an effect. Yes, um, <laughs> of which I was not going to um, continue with said painting. So that finished that. And um, the, these group of Essex chaps were like, oh, oh, I want it, I want it, I want it. Give me give me Squirty. And I was like, oh, God, no, no. <laughs> anyway, so uh, Squirty um, had to be started again. <laughs> so you can't control the splatter to a point because there's always mistakes. And I cannot tell you how many bonfires I've had and... You know, when somebody says, how long does a painting take? It takes, you know, how old am I? 27. <clears throat> um, it takes like that many years. To, 27. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh. Chris, why are you laughing? But um, Claire, you and I spoke for an article that I, I wrote yes. about your work a couple of weeks ago. And you used a phrase, um, you used a phrase uh, when we were talking about that, beautiful mistakes. Yeah. And because you've got no real control, haven't you, over over how you obviously there's a little bit of direction involved. Yeah. But the actual splatter itself is largely random, right? So there's yeah. so it the, the potential for it to go wrong is there. Oh, it's huge. But the thing is that there's uh points in the painting where I mean if you imagine if you anyone with a tail feather pick one up and have a look. Um they're hollow for about what, a centimetre, two centimetres at most. The old pheasants, that is. You can't use a young bird because their tails, uh, tail feathers are quite squishy, so they're completely useless. But the harder the nib, the the longer the kind of almost the hollow gap is. And that in turn kind of takes up the ink. So if you want to make a big splatter, I'm giving away all my tips here. Um, if you want to do a big splatter, then you put lots more ink in it. But if you want a subtle splatter, you almost kind of, that's why the desk in my studio that I paint on looks like a palette because I always practice first if I need ah. just a subtle tone. Um, but yeah, I am giving away all my kind of tips here. Um, and that is one thing that really drives me nuts. Um, anyway, carry on. <laughs> People copying. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you know, it's not an original. Everyone. It wouldn't she, be an original. So she she yeah. starts she started it all uh, actually when Harry was nine, uh, months old. nine months old, and we were staying with her parents. And my mother in law and I took Harry for a walk, and Claire needed some time by herself. I'm sure oh, not to drink a gin and tonic or something. Oh. But no, she sat at sat at their dining room table and got a kitchen table. Get, my kitchen table. Let me do it no, the on the kitchen table. And my father-in-law makes dusters out of pheasant tail feathers, so feral. sort of ties them onto the end of an ha- old broom handle, mm. so he can get into the corners. Um, and she took one of those out. He's he has a uh, a fountain pen with a refillable cartridge, and he has a funky curl. I think he had. I mean, very unlike no, your dad, pink. Did he oh, have pink? Sweetheart, no, darling. That was back at the studio when I was. Oh right, no. Funky. Well, it was black. Yeah, and dab. Oh my god, really? I've often wondered Daddy about. I have pink. often wondered about that. Seriously, wow. <laughs> I thought he pink pink ink. Wow, like, do you he... know my father at all? Well, I did wonder. I didn't dare oh, ask. Oh, God, yeah, no. Oh, the answer would have been interesting. Carry on. Well, that's why I didn't. Uh, yeah, so, and then she did this ostrich head, and mother-in-law and myself, and I think probably father-in-law, came back, and actually it was knockout. It was amazing. But it is amazing having seen how she's how her pictures have progressed from that point mm-hmm. to now. It is 
unreal, but people love them then. Oh no, I, I let back. No, but I people. No, but the thing is that people would still love them now. It's just that you have moved on. No, I cringe. So for, I think the, no. No, I'm but that's best. why I think also in my products that I do. So for example, I've just you know my placemats, and I've just launched the grouse collection, which I did a big exhibition in um, August about grouse. Um, I don't like to have a range of products that is, you know, available all the time and forever because I feel that my style changes so much that I look back on my work that I did, you know, 10 years ago and I go, God, it's not, it's not good enough. You know, now I want to do this, like the grouse. If you look at the style that I've done the grouse in, in comparison to, God, the first ever game bird sets that I did, you know, it's just... It's got so much better, and I only will go up. No, hopefully, it's, it's different. I don't think it's gotten no, any better. I yeah, think it's, it's evolved. I love you to bits and backwards again, but seriously, they were shite. I'd still buy an <laughs> early Thorburn. Oh, but he's Thorburn. Oh, <laughs> that's high praise. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't he lovely? Uh, but Claire, I wanted to ask. Yeah. So, what what do you feel like? So, you started at the kitchen table. Yeah. Um, what was like the big break? When it break. stopped being like a hobby and yeah. uh, maybe sort of started to feel like something country that fall. could be a career. No, I think it would maybe have been before. Country Fair was great, um, but I think it was before. I think it was at the game fair and there was the um, they had a competition for artists to produce a piece of artwork that would go on the front cover of the catalogue. And my fighting pheasants got I onto remember. that. Um, and then I had a stand... And it was just phenomenal. And everyone kind of recognized my style and recognized the splatters and recognized the fighting pheasants. And that's why um, each year I only do two fighting pheasants. I will never do more than two fighting pheasants because they are my iconic kind of that's what made me. And I almost want to, I know it sounds pathetic, but I almost want to give it some sort of recognition and, you know, make it, make it special. Yeah. Um, so each year I only do two. And if someone asks me for a commission of fighting pheasants and I've already sold two, I'll say I can do that for you next year. So it's it's a very special painting. But yeah, I think it was then. And then, yeah, it kind of was just like, oh, right. So this isn't just a kind of, you know, and I've got great respect for them, but, you know, hashtag mumpreneur kind of let's do something at the kitchen table and go to some village fairs. It kind of, I was like, oh my God, I could actually do this. This is, this is really exciting. And I had the most amazing amount of um, inquiries through my website. And I, I remember there was this guy, do you remember at, in William Rig? And this chap phoned me up or emailed me. and was just like, we've just, and this is flipping random. Okay. Bearing in mind, I do animals and things in motion. This chap phoned me or emailed me from Australia saying, we've just had a baby. We've called him <coughs> Ned after Ned Kelly. And I'm like, oh my okay. God, Do you remember yeah. this? Yeah. And he was just like, can you paint a picture of Ned Kelly's helmet and underneath in blue, write Ned. <laughs> and we want it, it was A1. Very cool, it was huge. It was quite cool. And I was just like, I'd forgotten about I that. I know, me too. I just remembered. Uh, and it was just like, right, so I do like, birds and rabbits and you it's know quite cool, things though. that it. and then suddenly I'm playing like painting a bucket <laughs> that was used as a helmet for some outlaw in Australia but yeah Ned Kelly's helmet is probably the most interesting thing I've painted and that is now out in Australia you haven't painted me naked yet you keep on promising oh my god <laughs> I used to paint nudes that's what I kind oh, of really? loved it you'd have if, yeah. you, if you did that you'd have to break the sort of two a year rule of Charlie naked I mean they'd be flying off the shelf yeah. oh my god really <laughs> Oh my god! In fact, what, what would the what would the exhibition be called? Charlie Emotion, probably. Oh my god! Can I tell them what <laughs> would it not be called? Directional splatter. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah! No! 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 Oh my god! Please, can I tell them about the Goliath? No. <laughs> you yes, can't please. end that comment and then go. Can I tell them about the Goliath? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to tell us what you're talking about now because you're, you're still... oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So basically, I was <laughs> away for a kind of girly weekend in a spa, and there was a big bubble bath. And you've been married, you've spiced them up. So you send a picture of you in a bath, bubbles, and everything. And Charlie, Charlie, Charlie then does the kind of. <laughs> 
I basically took all my clothes off, put my waders on, and took a took no, a selfie. No, he did that as well as I got a Goliath bottle of damson gin, um, and I painted on it um, a covey of grouse and some partridge and some pheasants to kind of show <laughs> an example of what I painted on bottles, and it was kind of me having it in the house to kind of clients coming in and <laughs> Charlie <laughs> got butt naked and took a picture of the Goliath bottle kind of holding it in between his legs. It was lucky it wasn't a mini. Yeah, I mean, or it, wouldn't have, worked. Bottle, it wouldn't or have worked. It wouldn't have worked, you or, or, or a Magnum. That would have been too small probably. But, yeah, you know. <laughs> <I> know. <laughs> so, 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 Sorry, Claire, what was the question again? No, I don't, God knows, who cares? Uh, I can't remember. But, uh, I know. I, I did want to touch. So, so that was the sort of big break start, you know. Uh, yeah, the game fair. But, and then I was on Country File, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was a big moment, Sorry, wasn't it? Chris. But I was going to say, like, obviously, Country File was no. a massive moment. Um, but then yeah. since then, your sort of status, you've ended up collaborating with some awesome brands, haven't you? And that's really sort of yeah, really fun. positioned you, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been really, really fun. I mean, I, I can think of uh, Shuffle, Purdy, Pogere, Pogere, yeah. I love that one. Tell us, tell oh us about God. some of those. That was amazing. So I met Paul at, I think it was... Paul Graham is this from Paul Roger. Yeah, yeah. He's so, he's no longer works with them, sadly. Um, and I met him at Burley a few years ago. God, it seems like forever ago because it it's been cancelled for so long. I'm desperate to get back. Um, and we just kind of started talking and he bought one of my prints, I think, for his um, uh, children's... Mm-hmm. Uh, bedroom or whatever and we were talking and saying you know that this is what I wanted to do and kind of get into different things and he then called me up and Paul Roger were doing this collaboration so basically I would paint on a bottle and they would then auction it for charity of my choice and I chose Tusk um so they sent me oh god oh god I sound like such a raging alky um Paul sent me a box of bottles. Are they magnets with the German worms? I don't know what they were. They're big. <laughs> um, he sent them to me in the post and he was just like, these are some to practice on. And I was like, oh, they're great. And I was like, woohoo, practice on slash drink. And <laughs> they were, you know, the, the whole cork and everything was intact. And I was just like, um, yeah, Paul, quick question. These, these, these are empty, but they look you know <laughs> full and he's like yeah Claire they're for you to practice on and see what you can produce and I was like yeah the thing is with artists what we need to do is we really need to engage in our subject matter and I feel that the only way to do this is to sample your products and bless him he did send me some samples um so yeah no that was a really fun um collaboration and through that I've had a lot of commissions to do thank you presents for people that go on you know lovely day shooting and they get me to paint pheasants or partridge or grouse on bottles and not necessarily pole, but, you know, dong and various other things. And they then give those to their guests. And there was this one client. And, the host. Uh, what? <laughs> their host. But there's not yeah, their host is like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Where did you get this, this done? This is great. I want to do this for myself. And um, my client was just like, oh, yeah, so I got uh, uh, Dom to do it privately for me. Uh, so, yeah, it's all private and it's because I'm such a good client. And I was there going, that's awesome, but it's also shit for my business. Can you please tell them where you got it done? And he still won't, but then he orders a lot from me. Yeah, so it's, it's all good. So, so talking of collaborations and nothing of that scale, we've got one on the go. Uh, so I, I, I must yeah. explain to everyone what this is all about. Um Basically, uh, right now, for anyone who joins Guns on Pegs Premium before the end of December, uh, we've, we've this is Ooh. well, we're, we're doing something together. So before we go into more detail, I must explain what actually Guns on Pegs Premium is. Um, it's basically Premium gets you all the best deals in shooting, like epic discounts. Um, it also gets you awesome uh, use of the the awesome peg match uh, service. So basically, if you can't find shooting, peg match will basically find it for you. So it, it does it. It basically finds shooting where no one else can, uh, and you can get access to read the field, shooting times, field sports journal, gun dog journal, much more. There's tons of stuff in premium, uh, and all that for the meager sum of seventy five quid a year. So, Claire, what's the offer we've got going on in December? Because you sent me a picture earlier of it. I want you to describe it. So um, the offer is that I am doing a uh, limited edition print of a covey of English partridge in A4 and it's mounted and lovely and then you can choose your own frame 
when you get it. That's unbelievable. So uh, if you join Premium in December, you'll get a limited edition print of a covey of English Partridge. And, and Claire sent it to me on WhatsApp earlier. It's epic. Uh, this is this it's is really too cool. cool. I yeah. want one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to sign up. Well, exactly. George. Yeah, we're, we're first I two. Can, I already have. <laughs> oh, do it again. <laughs> so the, you withhold the garters. The, yeah, well, indeed, yes. There we go. We'll, we'll exactly. negotiate. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so uh, so by the time this pod goes out, pop online, Guns on Pegs Premium. We'll see it there. Um, looking forward to seeing how that goes. I'm I'm a bit excited to see how much postage you're going to have to do, Claire. Yeah, I know. Are you looking forward to the invoice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with a big postage invoice. Don't worry about it. <laughs> how many garters am I getting? <laughs> how many legs have you got? Well, I've got two children that stockings need to be filled. Oh, From Father Christmas. This is good. It's Claire. It was. Young lads and girls listen to this. I know, and that's why I'm saying that he like that Chris needs to have a connection with oh, the I big see. man in the red suit to supply garters to this children. This is true. That try and steal yours, and then you go eat yeah, yourself. Yeah, we've got, we've okay? got to send some to Lapland, make sure, make sure they come south, yeah. put, put an oh, address yeah. on them. Yeah, exactly. Blue Manette. George, you can organise that. I know. No pressure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and can, can you get their initials um, or can you ask the big man to kind of put their initials on it? Yeah, yeah I've got a Sharpie. That'd be fine. <laughs> Amazing. I love a Sharpie. It's all about the Sharpie. Right. right. That was in perfect synchronicity. Oh, gosh. Um, that was definitely the end. <laughs> no, no, it's no. not the end at all. Charlie, um, you are far from just the other half of the famous Claire Brownlow. Um, you're an all round sportsman. You fish, you shoot, you do a bit of stalking. Um, but. As Chris alluded to in the introduction, you run what I reckon might be the coolest trip in UK field sports, the Game Train, which of course is an amazing name in and of itself. But can you just tell us a little bit about what the Game Train is? Um, yeah, so basically I run the uh, Game Train Scotland, um, or as my son pointed out the other day, shouldn't it be called the Scottish Game Train, which I thought was quite a nice touch. Rebrand it. Um, yeah, I'm not rebranding it. Um And basically, we charter for our guests um, the Royal Scotsman, uh, which is owned and operated by Belmond. Um, We charter it in its entirety, um, and we tend to run from... We've used Glen Eagles in the past, uh, which is fantastic, because obviously it's got a great um, station there that was cleaned up for the the Open. Uh, So it's absolutely immaculate. Um... We run, so we have a couple of nights at Glen Eagles, get on the train, and then we chug our way up through Scotland, uh, overnighting on the train and shooting as we go. So we sort of stop in um, Perth, Inverness, Boat of Garden, have a day shooting, get back on the train, and then the train either stays where it is and moves the following morning, or we move that afternoon. Um, and yeah, it's it's really That's cool. It's, it's actually a great way for... Uh, particularly foreign guests to see Scotland because, you know, you can fly in, you can have the most incredible time in Scotland staying in a private house or, a you know, so, uh, a hotel. Um, and there are many fantastic ones. But you unpack and you unpack your bags and there you are. You stay there and you shoot locally, you shoot on the estate, you maybe shoot, shoot with neighbours, do a bit of stalking, fishing. But actually on the train, you unpack your bags on the train and then we we move everything with you, and we go up. You know, we go Wherever to we, want, yeah, we go it? to um, uh, the west coast. Uh, we don't actually do any shooting over there, but I like to have a day where the guests can just simply enjoy the train. And there's a spa on the train. Sorry to interrupt, but I was invited by what? Charlie's oh. last clients to paint on the train, which is ace. But yeah. I, it was pretty cool, and the food yeah. is like Michelin star, and the whole thing is yeah. just next level. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, you're right. It is. It's it is unreal. My overwhelming feeling listening to you talk about it is the the strong sense that what you really need is a proper review written by a hardened shooting journalist. I don't. I can't, no names spring to mind, but <laughs> I think yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So yeah, Chris, uh, what are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Can you imagine, like, yeah. Charlie? <laughs> I'd have a letter on my desk oh the next day from George so saying, that's fun. it, I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does just sound absolutely epic. So in my head, 
the game train is like the uh, it's like the Hogwarts Express, but for people in tweed. Is that? A- <laughs> it's the epitome of kind of game. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, you can't you can't do anything better than that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it is sort of slightly hogs hogs warty, um, but it's I think it. it it's funny because each trip has a different, completely different feel to it. Like, you know, I will run a full non-shooting itinerary for those that don't want to go shooting. Uh, now, for the first couple of trips, that was taken up. Um, you know, we went to places like Culloden, uh, which is epic. If you ever are up in that part of the world, cannot ad- recommend it more. Um, and we do sort of other things like we'll take um, – take people around some of the, the mills and, um, castles and, and the castles. Yeah, exactly. And there's, we've done boat trips. In fact, the last one we did, we took them all out in a boat on the West coast, which was mega. Um, so, th- you know, th- the shooting side of it, you know, we're very lucky in Scotland that actually we've got some cracking shooting. Um, you know, I'm not a great fan of, of, of giving my guests stratospheric birds. Um, but, you know, we can produce the perfect bird that they, can kill, they, that, that they can kill cleanly, good size bags. Um, and by that, I mean, well, you all know my feelings on that. Um, and um, yeah, no, it's just, it's just a really cool experience. And the other great thing about it is that it appeals not just, in fact, it probably appeals more to the sort of person who wants to try shooting you know, the sort of someone who's watched Downton Abbey, maybe, or, you know, the American that's watched Downton Abbey and wants to give it a go, may have done a bit of shooting in the States, uh, because it just offers that whole all round unique experience. And- Can I interrupt just for a second? Um, when I was on the train, it was, it's like nothing else. And I've been very lucky to kind of have shot in very, uh, like a, a variety of awesome places. But it's just so epic to kind of go to sleep in one place and wake up in another. And the food is on another level. The staff are phenomenal. Did I mention the spa? <laughs> um, you may have done. And, you know, the landscape is incredible. And like, I met up because dad was helping out uh, with Charlie on um, kind of driving around the clients and stuff. And we drove around and saw the train. And the, the landscape that you go through is utterly breathtaking. And the Scotland people kind of have an idea of Scotland and with this you can just literally explore the whole of it at such a standard that you could never just kind of click on a button and buy I mean it is at the end of these podcasts we have this section called desert island shooting which I'm sure you've heard of before where basically people come up with their like one last day the most epic experience you know money's no object you've you're basically just describing desert island shooting for a lot of people basically oh definitely It, it is my desert island shooting without question it is my desert island yeah. shooting. Can you imagine just? Can you imagine just spending like five days on a train with just your mates, where you've got a spa, a bar? I mean, it's just amazing. It, it's, it's like it's unimaginable. Imaginable for me. You guys have totally pissed on my bonfire because that's what I wanted to do for my desert island shooting. <laughs> you guys, but now I'm gonna have to think of something well, did else. You think, did the, you think uh, that we get this far in the podcast and not have mentioned it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, the, I just keep uh, colouring in for actually, the, the, I'm not that clever. The, um, <laughs> <laughs> the, Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> <laughs> funnily, funnily enough, though, I I do I I do like to uh, keep the trips to three maximum four nights on the train, right. um, and the reason being is that normally on the train you're uh, it's sort of quite a relaxed itinerary, but actually, you know, out and about. Every day, I have one off shooting day where we go and do other things. Um, but actually, the whole experience is, you know, it can be quite overwhelming sometimes. I've had, I've had guests walk on the train and start crying. Uh, I've also because had. Because it's great. <laughs> yeah, because it's great. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think, um, I think we got that bit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, they didn't, sorry, they didn't sorry. walk on the train and see me and start crying. <laughs> oh, um, with happiness. But, but uh, actually, i tell you what, I can't wait uh, is in the future is uh harry my yes. eldest is uh learning the pipes uh, um, and he's getting quite good at it um so good. Uh, well, i say quite good at it. he's getting all right at it it's not Darling, quite, it's not that horrendous to listen to anymore <gasps> oh my god it's not like he's strangling a cat <laughs> um, so uh, yeah i can't wait for him to come on it and be pipe them on and off the train every day yeah, Brilliant. He's, he's lining up kind of going to murrayfield and saying my friend beastle earns like this much money i want to do the same 
and say, yeah, Charlie's going to employ Fantastic. Him. But I mean, Claire, I completely <laughs> get what you're saying about the um, about the, the experience of going to bed in one location on a train and arriving in another, yeah. in another. When I was a kid, we used to have a family cottage up on the west coast of Scotland in Glenelg. And oh, we oh, used amazing. to go up on the sleeper train. And... Yeah. It still is. I can remember, you know, the shape of the 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 cabin and the the fold yeah. down bed and the whole experience. And oh, it's just, fast. yeah, that's one of the reasons it appeals so strongly to me is because that's one of the those trips up to Scotland when I was a kid were sort of some of the happiest times. Do you know what? Even though we live in the borders, there's something about going up and kind of going into the mountains yeah. that just makes your soul come alive. Do you sort of wake up? Wake up when you're heading up as a boy. At uh, Rannoch Mall, yeah. that's normally where breakfast is yeah, served, exactly. sort of Rannoch. Yeah, Rannoch's yeah, yeah. bleak, isn't it? I, I just have you, have, have you, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's have you so guys beautiful. tried the new Caledonian um, Caledonian train, the, the new sleeper? No, but it's like, booked out months and months in advance, isn't it? You're months. joking. It's, we were here it's, 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 to London. It's quite... Um, it's, I've, I've had sort of fairly mixed reviews for it, but it, it certainly sort of still inspires that coming north, coming south, but just in a very short... Uh, you keep asking me to do a cartoon of that, don't you? Yeah, the new one. Yeah. House, House of Brewer or House somewhere. House of Brewer. You know, the, yeah. the, the, the car park in the House of Brewer with the, the door open and everything neatly packed. <laughs> and then on the way back, just Brewer bags with yeah, the whole... It's, it's the dogs not... are sitting in the bags. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like you were going to say, like the wives piling the shopping in. It's the husbands trying to hide all the tweed and the... I always get fleeced on fishing flies at the House of Brewer. Oh, do you? See, Charlie wasn't... Oh, am I allowed to say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be epic, but now you're saying... I thought it was pretty fantastic. No, but actually... Yeah. Charlie got lost in the men's <laughs> Yeah, I got... To be fair, <laughs> to be fair that was part of the problem. I got really <laughs> flustered, hot and bothered. And, and it Claire was too found hot, and bl- the heating was on... And he was having a mild you know panic that, attack. You know, you know they've got and them. I was in the gallery talking to the lovely lady in the gallery. Um, and Charlie's like, can you come find me? I'm in the men's department. I was like, okay, great. So I found him and like going around in circles, like shaking in the corner. <laughs> I, sort of, I was like, you know, right, you, sweetheart, you know, you, let's go. Let's go. Know, go. Hold my hand. The, the, yeah, sort of, you know, the new sort of Hardy's it's display. Like I'm sorry, not Hardy's. The shuffle um, fishing kit sort of hiding behind one of the mannequins, slowly he was blubbing. and sucking his thumb. <laughs> 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 blubbing. Yeah. <laughs> No. Well, they changed it. They keep on changing it. So Charlie doesn't like change, guys. Just to let you know. <laughs> so, so ever with anything, Charlie, bring it, just bring it back to the game show. We, we're gonna we're gonna get off one point which needs to be covered. Uh, you, this is obviously absolutely incredible, and people are imagining one thing in their mind right now. Can can you guide expectations on the sort of budget required so that you can actually make this your fiftieth birthday present? <laughs> right. So it's quite interesting. So. The way I've operated it in the past, it's a charter scenario. So you as a team take the train in its entirety. And with the shooting, hotels, you're probably talking from... (laughs) (laughs) You can buy a painting instead. Or or, or 20. Um, Uh, So it's it's from... it's from a yeah okay about 150 160 up to seven eight hundred thousand uh, thousand pounds yeah but that's, that's, uh, I, that's I, a straightforward shooting weekend that isn't it <laughs> it is a straightforward <laughs> shooting weekend think about it. it's the um but i can i can do it where we could potentially put a team on a normal running of the uh charters be quite early so it'd be partridges or grouse um, and that would significantly reduce the price. And we're looking, I mean, we're looking at doing fishing trips and stalking trips from the train earlier on in the year, which would again would be during their normal running of the service. And, we're, you know, you're probably looking at five, six grand per person um, in for that. A, for scenario. a few days. For a few days. So not yeah. dissimilar to sort um, of big day shooting, but for a few of them. With, uh, with yeah, the experience. Exactly. But that's. Yeah. But that's that's per person, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I mean, it, but it is. I mean, you've got to you've got to remember that the uh, you know the tr- uh, one of my guests is a was a um, hotelier, and his he waxed lyrical about the staff on the train. I mean, he you know he was just like that was proper service. And I think sometimes in the UK we can be uh, quite uh, disparaging, if that's the right word, uh, of our um, tourism mm-hmm. 
um, sector. And actually, it was really encouraging to hear him walk away and go, oh my God, that was epic service. Um, which is brilliant to hear it from from an American as well. So you you catch a fish or shoot a bird. And this is coming back to you two. Uh, who, who's, which of you two is better at preparing and cooking it? The children. <laughs> <laughs> We've taught them well. Really? So st- straight up, neither of you two. <laughs> uh, no, actually, I'll tell you what we do do with the... Well, the boys are actually do. really good. They, uh, they will do... Um, pheasant goujons yeah, harry harry's an epic chef when it comes to pheasant goujons i mean we do everything pheasant we do pheasant goujons pheasant fajitas alfie he has the dullest palate in the world <laughs> and it drives me insane it's got herman's mayonnaise it's Herman's. Mayonnaise. i mean it was revolting last christmas he got you know those kind of super packs like massive tubs the size of a oh no of so unappetizing and we finished yeah so gross we he we he finished it before january was ended it was disgusting what? i have to um, say that i have to say though yeah, rank that the not quite january I gave him a hand. Uh, the, Sorry, February um, the, second. the other thing we do actually with a, uh, a lot of the venison is uh, we do fondues. Yes, oh, love a fondue. Which is mega. Oh, yeah. I mean, seriously. So what I do, the it's quite cool. The excitement that so the get, house so might get a, catch on fire and <laughs> like, it's just epic when you have boys. You, 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 uh, so we, I dice. So what I do is I get a leg out, the, out of the freezer and I dice some of the leg or I dice the whole leg up which might seem a bit of a waste, but I dice it up. Some of it goes into the fondue and the rest we make into a stew for the next day. And it's a really cool way of using a leg yeah, if it's just a family. I think Charlie's way of doing venison is better than what I tried to do when Charlie, I think you were away on the game train or something, your mum and dad came up and I tried to do a slow roasted shoulder <laughs> of venison, like thinking, oh, it's just like lamb. And my father, he has never commented in a good way on any of my cooking. It was just like, oh, so we've got built on. <laughs> um, so I have to say that Charlie is the best at cooking game, I think. Okay. I do quite enjoy it. You, it was you, so funny, no, Chris. I'll tell you what, Chris, I, what made me laugh. The the other, no, no. What made We're me laugh the other day is um, the uh, Claire goes, what do you boys chat about on your WhatsApp groups? And I was like, well, where are you going? Not, not a lot, really. And she goes, can I have a look? And I said, yeah, go on then. And Chris, you and I remember, and literally, it was an entire day's worth of cooking <laughs> chat. She goes, you, she looked at, she looked at like one message. She goes, dorks. you guys are so boring. <laughs> honestly, honestly. You, I'm, no, glad, no, I'm glad she picked that day, Charlie. I, well, I wouldn't, worry, I wouldn't I have let her look. As well. <laughs> oh, God, of course I have. Sorry, no, I haven't. Um, yeah, no, Charlie. Can you is- check my phone? No, because you're so good looking. I worry that everyone's kind of after you. And I worry that you've so why you cut my hair the other day? <laughs> oh my god! Did you did you I see saw that? It on your Instagram. Oh my god! <laughs> like I have cut the boys' hair for what two and a half I've... years, and basically for a longer time than that. But then COVID kind of. Oh my god! I got it so. I thought long. you were an artist who was good with their hands. I know, I know. But then Chris, I, got... I was heading up to Edinburgh that night for a black tie for... dinner. <laughs> dinner, and I think she thought. I think she thought I was going to go out and pull later on in the yeah, evening. That's so what I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, on, I am like... worried. I know you're so good looking. But honestly, <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys use clippers. I literally put it on the lowest setting rather than the highest to kind of phage the gradient at the back of his neck. And it basically looked as though he'd been kind of attacked by a paper shredder. And I, it was awful. It was diabolical, and I and I still apologise. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to take your advice on the the fondue venison. We're having a fondue yeah, for so uh, for New Year's Eve here, and um, oh, and fun. I've got a leg of venison in the freezer. So that's I've been trying to decide what to do with Perfect. it, and that is what's going to happen. What awesome. a good idea! Just have some really good dipping kind of stuff yeah. with it. Yeah. My mum's an absolute queen at the fondue. Uh, it used to be our kind of we used to call it the Last Supper before going back to boarding school. Yeah, oh, that's so good. How funny! I'm you. not sure. The no, last supper, we, yeah. We do that? No, it's normally McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's got on the drive. When I was smaller. Oh, with you? Yeah. Well, oh, lucky you! Like, just completely piss on my parenting. <laughs> yeah, mum, mum, mum. Oh, your mum cooked for you, or you cooked yourself, <laughs> and I just get the boys McDonald's. 
whatever. And then you see another mum in the line of McDonald's <laughs> in the drive through and they're kind of like putting their head down in shame, but then also giving you a high five. <laughs> yeah, well, winning. So on the subject of parenting, uh, yes. Chris is obviously a very new parent. I've got two-year-olds. Um, oh. Any tips? You've got twins? Yeah. <gasps> oh my god amazing <laughs> i'll send you a picture of them in a bit oh, um, please. Uh, but have you got any tips for chris and i on introducing our kids to shooting and fishing yeah yeah i think i i would i would say because actually with two boys two quite very different boys yeah, very different um is you know, with fishing, fishing is a prime. Shooting is a little bit easier, I think. I don't but, know. With, but with the fishing, you know, I, I would, I've been down to the river with Harry, and we've been down there for five minutes, and he's turned around and said, "Yeah, a bit, bit bored now." So, yeah. and at that point, I'm just like, "Right, we'll fish for two more minutes, don't push it. and then come home." Because I think that, it, and it, the same applies, I guess, that, to shooting. That sounds as well. like dog You've training. Be so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, no, it really is. I mean, with regards to. Shooting and little ease. I mean, the boys have both been out with, you know, headphones on, um, or sorry, headphones, ear defenders on since they were tiny um, with shooting. And then I think the most excitement they get with when they're tiny wee before they can actually hold a gun is to go out with the beaters. They get tired. They have fun. They're rewarded with sweeties in the pockets. There's no ear defenders But also to wear. things and with they, sticks, make a lot of noise. Yeah, so. make a lot of noise and just kind of get excited about it and then go in a really cool tractor or, <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's just like, it's a real buzz. And then at 11sies, if they've had enough, then, you know, put them down for a nap or do something else, you know, get them excited about the whole process. And then when they can actually hold a gun, maybe try with, you know, like going around with a gun that's empty and, you know, swinging through, which we did for a season, and then get them into it with a full 10. And that's what we did. And Alf, who is so uninterested in anything to do with field sports, I mean, I swear to God, he was like on the riverbank, shoving Smarties up his nose, <laughs> being an absolute arse. Harry, who has constantly tied his own flies, wanting to use daddy's fishing rod that he caught a salmon on, Alfie caught his first salmon, aged five, <laughs> and it was a five pounder. Literally, smartest up day, picking his nose, going, Oh, I don't know what I've done, but oh, I've caught salmon. Harry gutted, really sad, but kind of very supportive with his brother. Um, you've got to keep them interested. And the other day, we had Harry's first boys' day, which was epic on every level it was just phenomenal and it was harry and his mates and then alf turned up you know for his bray and alfie had never shot a pheasant before and he shot on one drive he shot um a cock and a hen and he was the other side of a fence on top of the hill and all the guns were kind of on one side and then alfie turned up with charlie who was standing with him and the lady that was running the shoot was just like alfie shot his first pheasant and literally when he crossed the, the kind of head rage. We were like, woohoo, go Alfie! And like totally unprofessional and he shouldn't do it on a sheet, but we were all so excited. And he was absolutely buzzed and he was so excited. And then that same day, both Harry and Alfie shot their first pheasants. Partridges. Uh, sorry, partridges. And I'm so, I've got the most brilliant pheasant. Uh, oh my God, I really can't talk. Guys, why do you drink anything? <laughs> I've got the most brilliant pictures of Harry going up to Alfie, going, oh my God, this is epic, Alfie, well done. And this real kind of brotherly love going, oh, I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of you. And I think actually oh, the one thing I'd say about the last drive is uh, they put some quite a few partridges over the boys. Um, and I was standing with Alfie and his little face and he folded these partridges and he's folded three or four, four in the, after his mum, four, just by the way. Four, <laughs> four, four, four in the drive. And he turns around and he goes, I actually had to, because I, it, it's my full t- so it's my dad's full ten, my full ten. Harry's used it, Alfie's used it, but it's non ejector. So I was I was purposefully slowing down the loading because he turns around to me, and goes, "Dad, hurry up, hurry up, the adrenaline, the adrenaline, <laughs> Dad, hurry up." I was like, "Oh my god, we've got yeah, big bag Alf. <laughs> <laughs> he is going to be captain of Scotland at some point. Oh, really? He's rugby. very obsessed yeah. with rugby. So look, guys, the way we like to round off these podcasts, as you have, uh, we, we've alluded to already, is with our with our segment Desert, I- Desert Island Shooting. So to remind you, it's uh, it's one last day. Actually, it could be multiple days. It could be whatever you like. Uh, but what we need to know is where would where 
would be, what you'd be doing, uh, and who you'd have with you. Uh, so uh, let's go, ladies first. Well, see, this is tricky because I've got, th- <laughs> um, I've got three. First would be a rough day with my boys and my yeah. dad, just kind of rocking around the woods without at home Charlie and just kind of. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I said you, but I don't say you. Well, you said the yeah, boys. Yeah, you are one of the boys. Well, no, he's included yeah. in that. He's okay, included yeah. in that. So for my boys, i.e. Charlie, Alfie, Harry, um, and my dad just kind of rocking around the sheet at home and just kind of, you know, popping squirrels and whatever comes across and just, you know, really fun. Second would be a girl's day um, just outside Edinburgh. And I think this is where the drinks come from, actually. Uh what? Why are you going? Oh no, my God. I did. I was stretching my neck. Literally, stop it. <laughs> Do you want to go? And no, then you can you, talk you about off the really girls. interesting day. <laughs> Come on, then. Everyone will be literally on the edge of their seats. <laughs> <laughs> can I continue? Yes, of course. 14 years, ladies and gentlemen. 14 years. Um, so, you, the second. What? I think you've given me a black eye. <laughs> oh my God! I literally got nowhere near him just because the camera's off. Carry on. Oh my God, you're such an ass. <laughs> So yes, it would just be outside Edinburgh at Drum and it would be with my all, all my girls and my girlfriends and with my goddaughter at an age where she is allowed to drink and then we'd go into town and have cocktails and dress up and have a lovely black tie dinner back at Drum, which would be epic. And then I think if I could pull people from, you know, the grave, <laughs> if you think it sounds rather morbid, but I would go to Degary, which is on Arran, or Degree, sorry, um, and I would have my grandfather and my my boys, three of them. Um, and I I'm I come alive at the sea, and the sea is like my happy place. So it's an island, obviously, Aaron, and it's just the most magical place on earth. And we go there every summer; it's just heaven. And I'd like to go there with you know my grandfather, the boys, my father, my uncles my cousins and just have a proper Mac Mullen kind of, I was going to say piss up, <laughs> but that sounds really uncool, but yeah, it would be, and it would just be epic. And there would be a lot of pot sheen, I think. Um, and yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. I think that would be really, really Sounds cool. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I, I did that in high speed because my husband is kind of saying I'm taking too I'm much. so excited yeah. about my wife. Desperate to tell us if there's an island so studio. Boring. Go on, Charlie. <laughs> I have actually given this quite a lot of thought. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, so it would start with a uh, early morning outing on the foreshore with Peter Scott, a young Peter Scott. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, with his punt gun. Uh, breakfast would then be had with the older Peter Scott, so the one where he b- became con- conservationist. We could have a chat. Uh, then after breakfast... I would want to be shooting at home in Norfolk again with my grandfathers, uh, the boys, uh, my father, my <coughs> cousins. Claire, <coughs> sorry, Claire. You. You're, you're one of the boys, um, Jake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's fine. Thanks so much. Um, finished off with a a, a classic uh, duck flight around the flight pond at home at Glamford in Norfolk. Awesome. So it's, uh, both both yeah. of you, it's about the people, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. it's always about the people. I think that you have very special connections with people. And I think that the the bond you have with people that love what you do is so special. And actually, when you share it with them, they they come alive. And it's just, it's so much fun. And just, it's epic. And then the evenings are so much fun as well. Because you've both done, or you've all done, the most amazing day of what you both love and are passionate about. Yeah, it's... It- and then it's just a party in the awesome. evening. Awesome, yeah. And, and it basically tells you that, I mean, as good as the game train is, if you haven't got a good bunch with you and a good team, oh, yeah. you know, that's really what makes it. A hundred percent. I think, you uh, you know, for me, shooting is about the people who are there. Mm. It's actually when I, so if I do a normal sporting lap, by a normal sporting lap, I'd say booking a day shooting for some clients um, and a hotel. I actually, the estates I choose are more about the people on the estate. So, for example, if the keeper, there's a keeper here actually in the borders who, before the guests have even got out the car, he knows exactly how to play it. He knows exactly whether he can rinse into them um, and so give a bit of banter. And uh, he also knows instantly whether just to hold back a bit. His team, it's you know, the beaters are all involved with the guns. It's a really friendly day. 
So it's all about the people. It's got to be about the yeah, people. Yeah, I think that, and that comes again with fishing, isn't it? Like the best days fishing are when you have an epic gilly and you just have a laugh. I quite like being on my yeah. own. <laughs> right, on that note. <laughs> oh my God, you're such a dog. I like the gilly to turn up every now and again and go, yeah, ach, you're doing fine. And then yeah, I like, am, <laughs> just, just like through your lane. Oh my God, you're such a dog, Charlie. Thanks. I love you, but seriously, sweetheart. Rosie all day on the riverbank, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always rosy weather. Um, uh, guys, it's been so much fun having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for oh, having us. That's brilliant. Having us. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. George, can you uh, can you work out how many words Claire's spoken, how many oh words you've spoken, God, you how many it? words Chris has spoken, and how many I words genu- I may not I genuinely speak. think you've spoken more. Honestly. Oh, my God. Charlie, you literally slammed me down. See, so here you go. No, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll, get, you go. I'll, send, I'll send you the full transcript afterwards. <laughs> yeah. I mean, please don't, because I won't read it. No, it's not about reading. It's a word count. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. By the fact, I love you guys, and I really appreciate everything you've done. Guys. Take care. (laughs) Same to you guys. Right. So before we go, as per usual, there is one final reminder that you can get your hands on a pair of the very exclusive Guns on Pegs podcast shooting sock garters by sending us your shooting dilemmas for us to resolve or letting us know your unpopular opinions or letting us know where you've been listening from. Uh, Also a reminder that you can get your hands on an exclusive Claire Brownlow English Partridge print by joining Guns on Pegs Premium between now and the end of December. Uh, Just visit gunsonpegs.com slash premium to join. We will be back in a couple of weeks' time with another podcast and another exciting guest. But until then, thanks very much for listening and goodbye. I had a lot of kicks under the table from Mr. Brown. You were about about to tell stories on me that were not appropriate. Oh my God, which stories didn't I tell? Lots of them. No, which one? No, there was one that you didn't let me tell. I I did the Goliath. There was another one. Oh, Jean! Do you want to hear Jean? No, we can hear about another time. Thanks for listening all the way to the end of the Guns on Pegs podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, please do go and leave a review, hit that follow button, and of course, tell all your friends. See you next time.